This video will show you how to morph between two implicit bodies in Inspire Implicit Modeling. We'll start by creating two bodies to create the morph between. The first body that I'll create is an implicit cuboid primitive. The second body that I'll create is an implicit sphere primitive. I've been careful to make sure that the cube and the sphere overlap each other, and if I hide the cuboid, you'll be able to see the sphere underneath. I'm now going to open the morph context, and this context is asking me to select body A and body B. For body A, I will select the cuboid, and for body B, I will select the sphere. If I set the morph value to zero, it will show me something that is 100% like body A and 0% like body B. In this case, that will be the cuboid. If I set the morph value to 100%, I will have something that is 100% like body B and 0% like body A. In this case, that will be the sphere. If I set the morph value to 50%, I have a shape that is 50% like the cuboid and 50% like the sphere. If I'm not sure which morph value is the right one, I can quite quickly use the dragging facility to select a morph value that looks correct by eye. As with many of the implicit modeling tools, the morph value can be driven by a field. Looking at the field creation context, it's asking me to select a driving object. For that, I will select the global z-plane. There is a checkbox beneath the driving object called rescale, and we will keep this active as we wish to rescale distance values into the scale of morph values, which go between zero and 100%. If we look at the input range, we can see it's asking for the minimum distance and the maximum distance with respect to the driving object, which in this case is the global z-plane. These values should be chosen so that they are appropriate for your model. In this case, going from minus 50 millimeters to plus 50 millimeters fully captures the geometry. In a similar fashion, the output range is also asking for a minimum and a maximum blend amount. These relate to the input range. So when the distance is at a minimum distance, we will have the minimum blend amount. And when the distance is at the maximum distance on the input range, we will have the maximum blend amount. At minus 50 millimeters to the global z-plane, we will have a blend amount of zero. And when the distance to the global z-plane is 50 millimeters, we will have a 100% blend amount. I can use the interactive handles within the software to move the minimum and maximum range what this is doing is limiting the region within which the morph is taking place. Outside of these two planes, no morphing will be taking place and the geometry will look like the original input geometries of the cube and the sphere. Between the two planes, we will have a loft-like operation where it blends from cuboid to sphere.